Since the embargo has lifted, there's plenty more goodies for us to go through, but today we're going to go through the Lizardmen units. Now I'm going to be talking about Gorok, Nakai, and the Ancient Croxagor, as well as both of the new Croxagor units, the Razor Dons, and all three of the... Look at those guys, they're so mad in the background. All three of the Dread Saurians. So in our video, we'll just be kind of going through some of the new features of them, their costs, uh, what they're going to be like in, in campaigns, so on and so forth. You can really hear those Dread Saurians going at it. I'm going to back up here a little bit. Um, but we'll be going through each one of these units here in depth. So let's hunker down and go through. we got quite a bit to uh, mow our way through with the new Lizardmen units. Now our first lore choice we're going to go through is Gorok. We'll save both um, Nakai and the Ancient Crocs, or Crocs Gore Ancient, for the end of this video. But let's take a look at the new Lord here, the FLC Lord for the Huntsman and the Beast DLC. And you know, he is an old blood. A, a, Granted, he should be a little bit larger, but I love the character model. This is very indicative of the same one that we got during 8th edition. Um, his shield is there. I mean, it's awesome to see this character added into the game. And he is quite beastly. When you take a look at his stats, or I'm sorry, his cost, he's, he's 1,950 points, so 50 points shy of 2,000. And that's him fully loaded. If we were to make him just naked, no items, no abilities, we'd be looking at 1,200 points. Well, let's take a look at some of his abilities, some of his items, and, and what he really brings to the table, because he does have a lot. Um, Gorok is known as this individual that is able to just tank through a massive amount of damage. In the end times, he was seen just surrounded by Skaven. Um, and through many things throughout history, he has just been like a man, uh, like a one-man army. And we get this kind of represented in both his items, his abilities, and his innate abilities. So taking a look at his stat profile just to begin with here, his weapon strength is 290. So, I'm sorry, 450 with 290 of it being AP. That is pretty disgusting. And when we, we get into his mace here, we'll see how that can be pretty um, hard, heavy, and, and, and sexual. Uh, but also, if we take a look, he's got 100 armor and a silver shield here, which is going to negate a good portion of 55% of small arms fire to this bad boy. Now, he also gets 15% physical resistance, which is nothing to scoff at. This is going to help out with his armor, his great melee defense at 60. So this character is very beefy. Now, he doesn't have any mount options, and he is on foot, so we'll see how this kind of pans out. But if we're taking a look at some of the new things added to the game, we take a look at Marcus Wolfhart. And if we were to choose Lizardmen, it's going to be harder for Marcus Wolfhart to snipe out this Lord because he doesn't count as a large target. I mean, of course, he will take damage from the AP um, portion of Marcus Wolfhart's abilities as well as focus shot. But the fact that he's not anti-large makes it a little bit harder for him to get shot by some of those abilities. In addition to that, taking some, uh, using this character uh, when you would otherwise t otherwise take a Saurus Old Blood on foot or um, Krokgar on foot. This guy can just as well substitute and do even more damage in that scenario. Let's take a look at some of his other abilities here. He does have an innate missile resistance of 15%, stacking onto that 55%, which is pretty good. Now, he does have expert charge defense. Um, one thing to point out, guys, that this is still early access, so we will maybe see some of these values change and shift before launch comes. Um, but uh, of note, we'll, we'll talk about this, why this might be a bug in just a little bit. But he also has encourage. Um, you know, he who cares about hide and forced? <laughs> He's immune to psychology, but his first um, ability here is to the death. Now, if his uh, HP is above 50%, he basically gets like a Lizardman version of martial prowess in that it gives him leadership and melee attack versus, of course, uh, melee attack and melee defense. Now, this is nice here because it's going to help keep him in the battle. Battle. He does have 80 leadership, so it's quite strong as it is, but eight more melee attack is nothing to scoff at. Uh, if you were to bring this off of the character, um, I believe his melee attack would stay at 45. If we were to press start battle, we're going to be able to see that this should start at 53 melee attack and 88 leadership. Um, I'm sorry, 84 leadership once we press start battle. Uh, I believe these don't kick in until the actual battle is started. Same thing with Martial Prowess Mastery. Um, now, if we take a look to uh, Cold-Blooded, as to be expected, but we get Rock of Itza. Now, this is pretty potent. Uh, Krokgar has a similar ability that gives him some nice physical resistance and some speed, but Rock of Itza gives this guy 44% physical resistance, which is going to stack with his 15, giving him to a total of 59% physical resistance and 9% vigor. 
And it lasts for 24 seconds with a 60 second recast. So really, you only have to wait 36 seconds for this thing to come back online once you've used it once. That's pretty awesome. I I'm a huge fan of that because it kind of lends itself to the very tanky nature of this character, which I like so much. Now, uh, Stand Your Ground is a, uh, is a staple of any good uh, uh, Lord in, in uh, Total War Warhammer. Now, he does have the Shield of Aeons, and this is why I think Expert Charge Defense is a bug here. Um, if I were to take the Shield of Aeons off, you will still have expert charge defense. So I have submitted that as a bug that might change by uh, release. So do me mindful of that. But if I pop this, it gives me expert charge defense and 60 armor to everything in a 40 meter radius. Now, I'm not sure if that's saying that he won't have the expert charge defense without this, or it's saying that it's just simply gonna give it in a radius around him. So either way, it's either a bug or it's just simply saying that you're going to grant the expert charge defense to this character and everyone around him, which would also make sense. But it's worth pointing out that that might change um, as they kind of take a look at this a little bit more with a fine tooth comb. Now, it does have a nice 23 second duration on it, so you're going to be getting the same buff that a rune lord would be giving from their rune of armor. So it's pretty awesome here. It does have a 120 second uh, recast here, so that is something to, to be on the lookout for. Uh, but it does last for a good, like I said, 23 seconds. Lastly, we have the Mace of Ulumak here. Now, this thing is huge, plus 40% weapon damage and plus 40% AP, plus 44 melee attack. Now, if we take a look, we factor this with his, um, to the death ability here, um, that's what, eight plus an additional 44, that's 52 more melee attack onto his 45. So he'll be pretty much hitting whatever he wants, and he'll be doing a huge amount of damage here. I mean, half of 450 is, what, 225? So a little bit less than half of that, or a little bit less than that, um, more weapon strength onto this character. So he'll be really be able to pump out a huge amount of damage here. And I'm really excited to see how this character does in prolonged combat, especially when he's surrounded. He has the ability to mitigate a lot of what's coming his way between stuff like, well, I mean, Standard Ground actually kind of helps out with melee defense. But Standard Ground, Rock of Itza, he's got so many defensive capabilities, but at the same time, he can really pump out a lot of damage with the Mace of Ulamok. So I think Gorok is going to be a very interesting addition to the Lizardman roster as far as a lore that is not on a mount but is on foot, and I think that as for a lord that's on foot, he's going to be quite devastating. Now for the first of our brand new units added to the uh, Lizardmen are one of the very few units missing from their roster, the Razor Dons. Now these bad boys are going to be very similar to what we saw already with the Salamanders in the last DLC, but they have a different focus. If the Salamanders are focused more on infantry and um, fire damage, the Razor Dons are focused more towards heavy infantry or heavy armor with a lot of AP damage. And when we take a look at these guys, uh, we can see them next to their Regiment of Renown unit, the Amaxan Barbs. Uh, when we take a look at these guys, they do have AP in both their melee category and their missile damage. So we get a lot of cool stuff with that, right? So we get 62 missile damage here, um, shot across three shots per volley. And what they do have a really long reload time at 10 seconds, well, almost 11 at 10.8. Um, so that is something to be, I guess, mindful of. And they do have 70 speed, so they do have some, uh, some quick moves on them. Um, I will say they have a lower melee attack, but a higher melee defense than their Salamander counterpart. Now, if I'm being totally honest with you guys, Comparing these guys to Salamanders, I think Salamanders ultimately are a better choice. Um, Razor Dawns might get tweaked before the launch of the game, so again, be be aware of that. Things might might come to uh, fruition a little bit differently by the release window. But in my experience, Razor Dawns are very underwhelming. They don't shoot very fast. Um, I mean, the 10.8 is pretty standard for these beasts. But at the same time, they just feel a little clunky. I feel like I get more damage from Salamanders because of the splash damage and the burst that they can really dish out versus the Salamander hunting pack. Um, I will say, though, that this is the most AP damage, um, ra ranged AP damage that you're going to get from anything that isn't a, uh, a beast with a war machine on its back. So you do get a substantial amount of AP damage from these guys, but... Ultimately, I just don't really think that they are worthwhile as opposed to the next unit we'll talk about in just a bit here. Now, it is worth noting, too, Primal Instincts has got a little bit of a change here. Um, it's now 
going to cause your unit to rampage, but it's also going to increase their melee attack and their charge bonus as they rampage from unit to unit. Now, this is worth bringing up when we talk about some of the Feral units, namely the, fed, the Feral Dreadsarian. So we'll uh, get into that in just a bit here. But they do cause fear, which is uh, quite nice to be, and to be expected for... Look, look at these things. I mean, I would be terrified of this thing just like popped its way into my bathroom. Holy crap. Now, moving into the Regiment of Renown, the Amaxan Barbs, things are a little bit different. So when we take a look at the cost of Razor Dawns, the standard Razor Dawn right here is 900 points. Now, when I take a look at the Amaxan Barbs, they're 1,200 points. What does that 300 point increase get? Now you get your standard 10 leadership, but you're going to get more melee attack and more melee defense, which is quite nice at both 27 and 37. But you're also going to get more missile damage. That isn't more missile damage per shot. It's a faster reload time. So take a look at this. I think it's 7.5, 7.8. Or nope, not at all. It's 8.4. <laughs> so an 8.4 second reload. So you're losing about two and a half seconds on the reload. Or I'm sorry, gaining about two and a half seconds on the reload. So you're getting more shots out per 10 second interval which is nice, you know, that is going to pump up their, their uh, damage quite a bit here. And the nice thing about it, too, is that you'll also be doing poison damage. Poison damage, of course, reducing speed, weapon damage, AP, and AP missile and missile damage of units you hit. But I, I think that, that for 300 points, the Amax and Barbs get a better trade-off, in my opinion. And in all honesty, I think that if you are to see Razor Dons in any capacity in a competitive match, I think the Amax and Barbs are a better bet. Um, although they do bring AP to the table, you just have so many better AP kits with the um, Lizardmen. Even even a Feral Bastilladon is, is going to do a ton of AP damage. And even the new uh, Sacred Croxigors are just an AP powerhouse. While I do think that having more ranged AP is great and a missing link for the uh, Lizardmen, I don't think it was so crucial that they needed this. Um, but at the same time, I'm all for having a roster filled out, so it's quite awesome. Now, in addition, though, they do get a nice 15% missile resistance that'll help mitigate uh, the fact that they're going to be probably focus fired by any ranged AP damage uh, because they do have a nice whopping 90 armor. And they do a melee attack that will be both AP and poisoned as well. So they'll be able to squeeze out of engagements a little bit easier. Uh, with that 70 speed, they can really, really, really uh, move out of things fast. So any melee unit that's looking to engage with them, the Max and Barbs can poison and then run away if they haven't already poisoned them from range. That concludes our uh, new Razor Dons, but let's move on to my favorite unit of the new Lizardmen. The Croxagore Linebackers. I mean, the sacred Croxagores. Like, look at these guys. They're loaded with, like, electronic sock and boppers. Like, they are mean and nasty. And they have a, quite a cool stat line here. Uh, they do have 100 armor, which is very bulky on these bad boys. Um, their leadership is pretty good at 75, and it's 5 less than Gorok himself. Uh, their speed is 46, which is about the same speed as a Skink. Uh, but they do both... AP and magic attacks, which is pretty cool here. In addition to that, if we take a look at their actual weapon strength, it's 84 AP damage. The next thing that does more AP damage than this is any of the dinosaur units. So as far as any version of Asaurus or Skink or Temple Guard, these guys do, or I mean, for that matter, Croxigor, these guys do the most AP damage. You have to go up to uh, the Bastilladon or the Pterodon to start getting into the 100s range of AP damage. So these guys bring a lot of AP damage to the table, and I think they fit a role very similar to the Famir, especially when we talk about their uh, Regiment Renown unit. Now these guys come in at a, uh, a, a I'd say, a, a fair point cost of 1,250, and their Regiment Renown unit is 1,700. Now, what does that 1250 get you, though, aside from this? You also get some nice missile resistance to counter a lot of the AP damage you're getting your way. Siege Attacker, which will be very strong in Nakai's um, campaign, because you do start with these guys for Nakai. And, of course, they do cause fear, and they have their standard uh, Primal Instincts package. Now, what about the Regiment of Renown unit? Now, what I like so much about the Sacred Croxigors as a whole is I think they're a very good all-comers unit. They can fit into almost any, uh, I guess, loadout you want to choose for Lizardmen. And at only 1250 points, getting 25, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, getting 2500 points of these guys is not going to be too huge of an anchor on your points because they do a lot. They can really kind of help counter a lot of play from a lot of different things. They don't have anti-large or anti-infantry, but they have such a huge amount of AP damage coming out of them that they can mitigate a lot of the scarier things you see on the battlefield. Especially, they're big, huge monsters, so they're going to be able to uh, add a lot of volume to a Skink line, or even a Saurus line, which already has quite a lot of volume. 
Now the cohort of Huatl is the regiment renowned Sacred Croxigors. And these guys play very similar to Mistwalkers. Now Mistwalkers, uh, you know, are the Norskin regiment of renowned Famir warriors. Now how do they really compare? Uh, well, these guys are 100 points more expensive than the Famir Mistwalkers. But the Famir Mistwalkers have better defensive stats. They have 110 armor and they have uh, melee defense, which is a little bit higher. I think it's in the 40s or, 50, or low 50s range. But these guys have more melee attack, they're beefier, they do substantially more damage, and as a whole, I like their kit. Um, the Mistwalkers get the same thing here, they get this nice physical resistance, but the cohort of Waddle, of course, gets this physical resistance as well, which is so strong, I think, because they swap out that missile resistance for physical resistance, which I will gladly take. In addition to that, they can also sunder armor. So, really, for... 350 more points, you're getting a pretty good unit here. Wait, no, 550 more points. You're getting the ability to Sunder Armor. You're getting some physical resistance. Um, as far as the stat differences go here too, you do get nine more melee attack and eight more melee defense. You're gonna be hitting way more often with that Sundering Armor ability, and then you're gonna be doing way more damage after that Sunder Armor kicks in. In addition, you have a whopping 84 of that damage, which is just gonna mitigate any armor altogether. So. As a whole, I think the Sacred Croxigors are a new strong unit to the overall competitive meta of the Lizardmen, and I think in campaign, people are going to find these guys really strong in the early game, especially for their siege attacker capabilities. All right, it is Big Papa time. It's time to talk about those Dread Saurians, and we got all three variants here before you. We have got the Feral Dread Saurian, the Normal Dread Saurian, and then the Shredder of Lustria. I've had to turn the game volume down because these guys are so huge and loud and badass. Let's take a look over here at the Feral Dread Saurian coming in at a whopping 2300 points. Now, 2300 in my mind is a very palatable amount of points for this unit. It has 750 AP damage and a lot of that is is just 530 grotesque AP. Like just slapping things armor all around. In addition, they have 100 armor. And, and this is something that Turn and I have echoed many, many, many times, their speed of 60 is huge. And they have a really good melee attack at 52. Their biggest weakness though, their Achilles heel, I'd say, is their melee defense. And the fact that they are so huge, they're gonna be very easy to target with any kind of range damage. So be mindful of that when taking these guys. They do need to be screened, they need to be supported with revivification crystals, um, the new life slon, any way you wanna support these guys, they do need that healing to stay in the fight. Now, one thing I did talk about earlier, that I want to bring up right now is that these guys just have Rampage. They do not have Primal Instincts, which is a different type of Rampage. Primal Instincts will give you Rampage, but also gives you your charge bonus and your melee attack. Rampage, you just lose control of the unit. So don't think Primal Instincts is kicking in when you lose control of these guys. It's just straight Rampage. And it's probably a good thing because then they would just be disgusting. Um, but in addition, they do cause terror as to be expected. They've got Siege Breaker and they also have a nice 15% missile resistance. I mean, these things have some of the, the toughest hide in all of Lustria. There's some of the largest things in all of Lustria next to, say, the Thunder Lizard. So it's awesome to see these things added into the game. Now, again, at 2300, I think they're a very good purchase. Uh, they're a very good addition to your Lizardman army. I, I think when you start to go to the larger portions or the, the different versions of the Dread Saurian, you start to get a little risky in your approaches here. So let's take a look at just the normal Dread Saurian. Good God, look at this guy. This is not, he's not any bigger, but he's just terrifying. All He's, he's, he's massive. Uh, a little bit of lore knowledge here. Um, the Dread Saurians, they kind of like hang out in uh, these, I guess you could say like, I don't want to say a pen because they're they're definitely not you know caged animals these things can go wherever they want and the skinks adorn them with all this like beautiful awesome golden finery and armor to kind of help protect them at the same time and the dread saurians like like it they're like ah yes i am like your giant lizard cat if you piss me off i'll shit in your boots but still i'm amazing so with your dread saurian you get a howdah filled with skinks with little poison javelins and those poison javelins are quite strong in addition here they have a little uh little machine gun javelins you can see right there as well not javelins but machine gun blow dart machines giving them 612 ap damage uh, with 7.2 reload time and a little bit of ap but they're going to be shooting a lot of shots here you'll see these things just peppering things as they move in for the for the for the kill now that's really strong because again we as we mentioned 
Poison is going to reduce speed, weapon damage, and AP damage, and both missile damage as well. So, these guys do have a lot of going for them, but at 3,200 points, you're sinking almost a whole entire quarter of your 12,400 point allowance in multiplayer. So you have to be very careful with how you select these guys, um, or how you bring these guys to the table. They can fire whilst moving, which is nice, and they still retain their missile resistance, which is quite good as well. They have a decent range of 115. They don't have the most ammunition, but at the same time, the Dread Saurian needs to have, again, a lot of support, bring it with Sacred Croxigors, keep a lot of healing on it. It is going to be focused. The nice thing here, though, is you don't have to worry about Primal Instincts or Rampage. Bringing us to our last thing on this list, though, is the Shredder of Lustria, the Blue Boy. Look at this. I'm going to move this guy over here just to really focus in on just those piercing blue eyes. You know, probably great in the speed dating realm. Um, his whole helmet in general looks is way different. You can see it. Let me see if I can just pause this. No, we can't. I gotta start the battle. To pause it. But you can see his adornment is different, shifting and changing. Um, it's it's an awesome model. It is huge and terrifying. Um, as a whole, though, not a lot different. You do get 12 more melee attack, which is quite nice. You get eight more melee defense and 10 more leadership, as to be expected. But the two big things you get are one dread aversion, which is already going to help out with the fact that he causes terror. So as long as you're not against an army that is immune to psychology, like any kind of undead army, um, then this is going to be very awesome to have. In addition, you also get Encourage. So while this thing is kind of making its way through the front line, it'll at least be acting as a leadership linchpin for the rest of your army. The biggest drawback, though, is this guy is 3,800 points. He's just shy of an entire third of your multiplayer point allowance if you take him in a competitive match. So you're going to be having a long line of skinks to help defend this guy, and it won't go too well if you're not at least in a 2v2 or have a very set plan for how you want to use the Shredder of Lustria. Now our last two units are both WWE stars in and of themselves. We're going to be starting with the Ancient Croxagore, the Croxagore Ancient for that matter. Now this is the generic general or I guess lord version of Nakai and he does have a lot going for him 120 armor he's got quite a bit of melee attack um, his melee defense is, is something that could be desired at 32 but at the same time he's got 460 AP uh, anti-infantry weapon strength coming out of him you can see here that 320 of that is dedicated solely to AP um, so he is a bit of a powerhouse when it comes to just wading through tons of individual infantry units. When you think of where this character would be deployed amongst green skins, amongst Skaven, amongst other empire um, armies, the Crocosagor Ancient is going to be very devastating in, an, in a campaign with Nakai. Now, in addition, though, he does have some other benefits. Now, let's take a look at his points value real quick. Um, fully loaded to the brim, he's 1,728 points. Um, completely naked, he's 1,200, just like Gorok. Now, he brings some different things to the table, though. So, he does have his Missile Resistance and Siege Attacker, which is quite nice. And Courage and Fear to be expected, and Cold-Blooded as, uh, as well. But, he has the Amulet of Itzel, which gives a 66% damage resistance to him at, for 18 seconds, which is quite nice because it is only on a 60-second recast. You can only use it once, unfortunately. Um, in addition here, you have the Horn of Kygor, which is going to increase his charge bonus by 18%, his melee attack by 25 and his leadership by 8 um, This is not just him, though. This will affect his allies in a 40-meter radius around him and can be used in conjunction quite well with his other ability here, Monstrous Strength. Now, this will give him 16 more bonus versus infantry, infantry and 20% increase on his weapon damage and AP damage. That's 552 total weapon strength with a nice 51 bonus versus infantry. So if there's any foot lords around or foot heroes that need to be just completely capsized as quick as possible, popping monstrous strength followed by the Horn of Kygor is going to make for a huge amount of uh, damage coming out of this bad boy. But he's going to be at 74 total melee attack, so he's going to be landing a lot of his hits, just like Gorok is going to be landing the majority of his hits when he pops his mace ability. Now, the last ability on the Croxigore Ancient is one that also Nakai, or Nakai also shares, is the Miasma of Despair. Now, this is not a persistent... Um, hex effect or I guess aura you have to turn it on you have to trigger it it is an ability um, but it does last for 16 seconds and it reduces the leadership 
speed, and vigor of anything around the Croc score Ancient. The nice thing is that it's a 24% reduction to speed, so if something is also getting poisoned by, uh, like say, a, uh, a large target, or an individual lord or hero is already getting poisoned while the Croxagore Ancient, or Nakai for that matter, is attacking them, you at least are going to also reduce their speed by 24%. That's a max, of, or that's a total of 44% speed reduction. And Croxagore Ancient himself has got 46 speed, so he can really move it. So there are a lot of benefits of using that to really get someone before they can flee away from your large, cumbersome lord here. Um, but I think it's got a lot of really great um, attributes, especially the leadership and vigor reduction too. Especially if something is very beat up, it's probably low in leadership anyway. This can help uh, break it and route it uh, so that you can kind of finish it off with a lot of your skirmisher unit. Let's jump onto our last unit on our Lizardman roster unit list here. And here he is, the mace twirling namesake of the Hunter and the Beast DLC, Nakai the Wanderer himself. Now he hails in the lovely land of Albion, he likes long walks on the beach, and oh, never mind, he doesn't like long walks on the beach. Let's take a look at his stat line. So he does have a nice 520 weapon strength, he's got 380 of that, is a whopping... Um, AP centric. Now, taking a look at this guy and comparing him to the ancient Croxagore, he does not get the advantage of bonus to infantry. And that is honestly something I find a little surprising since Marcus Wolfhart gets a bonus versus large, and the whole, you know, namesake again of the DLC is the Hunter and the Beast. You'd figure these two would be the antithesis of one another. And with that, with Marcus having AP and anti large, I would think Nakai would have AP and anti infantry. Instead, it's... God, look at that WWE stance. He's got the threats down and everything. It's like The Rock came into this game. But um, you would think he would have AP and anti-large, or anti-infantry. He doesn't. That's only on the Ancient Croxagore. So that is worth noting. Now, in addition, though, you do get more melee attack and melee defense in the Ancient Croxagore and 120 armor and 80 leadership. So... Uh, you also get a nice boost to his speed from 46 to 50. So this guy has got a little bit more of wheels on him. Uh, not as fast as a lot of targets, but I mean, he can go toe to toe with a war wagon at 50 speed as well. So <laughs> gives you a good frame of reference of things. Now, again, everything else for the most part is exactly the same. Missile resistance, siege attacker, fear, encourage, hide, um, and also cold blooded. Now he does have one item though is the Golden Tributes, and this gives perfect vigor to anything in a 30 meter radius around Nakai, and that is a constant persistent effect, which is actually quite nice. Uh, if you think about this, the amount of large creatures and moving that you have to do for the Lizardmen, this keeps things in really good shape, they don't get bogged down, they don't have to suffer leadership from that uh, low vigor, they won't be slowed down, they won't be doing less damage. It's an overall um, amazing ability here. So I really like this, um, but it really kind of factors into his overall points value. So Nakai, fully loaded, is 2,466 points, just shy of 2,500. Uh, if you were to make him if you were to make him naked, if you were to strip off all of his items and abilities, he'd be 1,850. So no matter how you factor it, he's going to be a pretty costy boy. Um, and I think that this is one of the more advantageous abilities, depending on how your army is configured. If you have a lot of mobile units, then Perfect Vigor is really going to help out as long as they're staying relatively close to Nakai. And if you put Nakai with um, the new Temple Guard Regiment Renown unit, the, uh, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, the Star Seeker, whatever guard, he is just so strong. He now will get an additional 15% physical resistance because of the Guardian passive of those guys and his 120 armor. I mean, he becomes pretty disgusting. In addition to that, you have the Miasma of Despair that we talked about earlier on the Ancient Croxagore, uh, reducing the speed, leadership, and vigor of anything around him. But here's the big thing. Here's what makes Nakai so strong is his Nakai. If not his Nakai ability, his Primal Roar ability. Now, this will rampage things, but it'll also mean those things that are rampage have 22% physical resistance, himself included, and 44 melee attack. So if you're looking at his melee attack, it will become 104 melee attack. If you have him next to the Regiment Renown Temple Guard, he will then have 37% physical resistance. So Nakai the Wanderer can tank a ton of damage if you use him properly, or if you at least keep him properly supported um, from, say, the Temple Guard, or even helping him out with Harmonic Convergence from Heavens. There are a lot of really great things that you can couple with Nakai to make him just an absolute powerhouse. Uh, if you saw my uh, quick play battle of the Lizardmen, where it's uh, Lizardmen versus Dov plays High Elves, Nakai and the primal Dreadsarian were just round robin beating the shit out of Tyrion. 
So, and they burst him down from near full health to like almost no health in three or four hits between the three of them. So you can really have Nakai push out a lot of damage and he can take a lot of damage. And I think that's what makes him and Gorok so cool and thematic. But as a whole, I'm really excited for this DLC if it's not grossly evident. Uh, I think Nakai is an awesome uh, addition to the Lizardman roster in, in a different way than I would have expected. And Gorok too is, has a lot of amazing abilities. And ultimately I think that the, uh, the new Sacred Croxagores are really the winners of the Lizardman portion of the DLC. I think they have got so many uses and I can't wait to see them brought out into more competitive play. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Um, I did record this video after my Empire Units video. So uh, when you watch the Empire Units video, which is coming out on Sunday, <laughs> you will hear me talk about this video uh, as if it's coming. So ignore that when you do see the video. I apologize ahead of time. I decided that like, well, Elizabeth haven't gotten enough showcasing of Gorok and Nakai. So I'm going to do this here first for you guys so you can really uh, dive in on it. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.